pleased to have uh, Ron with us today. And at this time, I would ask you to please silence all of your cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you. Enjoy. I could turn my own. Oh, thank you. You want to be in here? Ah, you don't want to be in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody in the back can move up if you want. You don't have to. Okay, I'm going to try to speak real loud. Ah, uh, here you go. Here's a new. Here's a newcomer. Thank you. Welcome. Publishing. Publishing. Self-publishing. Yes. Okay. My name is Ron Pram Schaefer, and some of you may or may not know me. I've been around the uh, publishing world for a long while. I, I own a, a company or a website basically called selfpublishing.com, you know, which is, you know, reminds me what I do every day. Uh, there's a couple of other, <laughs> they there, send me there you go, go through the bar. Uh, we'll have this going on for a while because there's another one upstairs. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the whole world, you know, of Publishing has changed. So, I mean, I, I started and I, I just turned 60 last year, this year. And I've been doing it since I was 20. And I couldn't list in an hour, I couldn't list in a three hour course how much things have changed over the years. But the probably the biggest thing, and again, remember now, we're, we're talking about the self publishing, which really, again, now, I, I'm going to start with this. I, I felt like I had to write something up here. Okay. <laughs> remember, writing's a love. Okay, publishing's a business. Okay, and whether you call it self-publishing, you're in the business of publishing. So, I mean, you can love to write and write and God love, I mean, you can, you know, make copies, give them to your kids, whatever. I mean, you, you know, if you decide that you want to publish, you've then taken off the hat of the writer and you've become the publisher. Okay, and real simple, I mean, self-publishing, you can't, you know, self-publishing means self, me, is the publisher. Right, self-publishing. You know, there's a lot of distraction, unfortunately, out there in the market with exactly what's self-publishing and exactly what it's not. So, in the all, uh, we only have an hour together. So I'm, I'm going to try to, if you don't walk away from here with any other uh, understanding, <clears throat> it's going to be what you know, exactly what is self-publishing and exactly what is not self-publishing. Okay, like I say, I mean, I couldn't, the, the, the changes that have happened over the years are, I mean, they just go on and on. I mean, publishing used to be, you know, very elitist, okay, and it was very elitist, you didn't even own the self-publishing role, because you had to have a lot of money, okay. You had, though, back, a couple of you old enough maybe remember, like an IBM Selectric, okay, well, what went hand in hand with that IBM Selectric was like an old wanna type machine. To, to get to the point where you just had a page of all type that you could even think about going out and getting published, okay, you were six, eight, ten dollars a page, right? So a 256 page book, you know, you, you, you were already at three thousand dollars out of pocket before you even got anywhere close to like a printing press, marketing, anything else. So what, what happened, and that was back in, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, early 80s, I guess. Uh, What's happened with the uh, computers, okay, is we've lowered the bar, we've lowered the entry level, okay, so it's not, and my, my company, you know, I, I came up, I say I had my first sales job when I was like 12 selling soap door to door for the YMCA, you know, I had my first, published my first doll book that I actually had to go out and sell when I was in, you know, early 20s, had a small publishing company during, you know, during the 70s. And I had, I, I didn't know anything about business. It was, I had a couple partners, you know. So it's technically like if you're, you know, you're a self-publisher, that means you have one book. But if you have a couple of other people you drag into the picture and you do more than one book, that makes you a publisher. It's all circle. You're always a publisher, whether you've got one book or whether you've got a group of books. Uh, unfortunately, the group that I had put together when I was in my early 20s, we had a great editor, we had a great, you know I mean, we had great writers, we had, I was a printer by trade. Uh, we didn't have anybody with real business experience. So I had, to, I had this idea in my mind that, well, if I was, you know, if I was going to be bankrupt, I'd just as soon it be by the time I was 30, so I could start over again and still have plenty of time. Well, luck would have it, I was bankrupt by the time I was 30, you know. <laughs> and it came down, I mean, looking back on it, 
it, it, it came down to, you know, the, the, you know, we thought, well, we're different, we're controlling everything, we're, you know, self-publisher, right? I mean, you, you, you control, you know, you control everything. Well, there's still a certain amount of principles that you have to follow, okay, and they're basic goal business principles. Okay, you, you wouldn't dream of owning an automobile repair shop or going and buying one unless you knew something about automobiles or at least had a spouse or a son or some, you know, somebody that knew about automobiles. Okay, so there, there's really, there's no difference, okay? I mean, if you're thinking about, you know, publishing, and most people end up self-publishing after they've talked to all these guys in the horse stables and everything and try to, you know, I really want to sell my book. And selling the book to a publisher, God bless, I mean, er everybody, oh, first of all, does everybody have a book? Right? Okay, great. Okay, well, just a quick, quick hands. How many have a uh, nonfiction book? To do a small number. Have fiction? Ooh. Okay. Uh, that, that's fine. I mean, fiction's great. You know, <laughs> just how it's all. But fiction, for the most part, that, that's probably the most common it gets all, ends up not quite making it to a publisher, and you have to all, you know, you have to self publish. Okay, nonfiction. Nonfiction's actually all good if, if you happen to be qualified to write about your subject. Uh, nonfiction actually is it's a little bit more predictable with sales. You know, does everybody, if, you're, if, if we're going to say here that publishing is a business, uh, the primary reason to go into business is to make money, okay? And anybody that starts talking anything different to you, it's to like walk away. I mean, you, you wouldn't be doing it. I mean, it's one thing you write and you can get a, you know, get a copy or two and hand out at like, you know, Christmas time or whatever. You know, it's one thing, I mean, if, if, you're, con if you're really considering publishing, you, you got to, in the back of your mind, be thinking that you're doing it to try to make some money, okay? And that uh, that maybe ultimately you get picked up by, you know, a, a publisher one day and they give you a big check. Uh, there's one handout that I gave you. Now, how, how many have been looking, how, how many of this is their, like, first time ever going to anything about self-publishing, some you know, any kind of stuff? All right, well, that's good. It's good. How, how many of you like researched this a little bit and gone on the, gone on the internet? I mean, you go you go to Google, right? The logical first step at Google is you put in self-publisher, self-publishing. You come up with this giant list. You know, first all, I'm sure you've learned by now that the top two or three are paid listings, right? So you know, deep down inside the uh, search engines are trying their best to uh, come up with the best result for what you enter. Okay, kind of a trick way around that. Those top three, they like making money too. You know, Google makes lots of money. But within the, oh, the paid listings, within the natural listings, okay, under self-publishing, maybe there's whatever, 20 on the first page. Okay, there's only a couple that are truly self-publishing at all. I mean, anybody heard the, the term vanity publishing before? Okay, now I use that all the time. I mean, it, it used to, like I say, I'm, I'm kind of an older guy. And it used to be in the yellow pages under publishers. They were giant full page ads. <clears throat> they said, writers wanted. Send your manuscript. Well, they were all like vanity presses. Okay, and what though, traditionally, a, a vanity press would look at your manuscript, guess what, you qualify, but though, you know, you're, you're gonna have to help us along and you're going to pay for a production and you're going to get a couple of books back and you're going to feel good. You know, that's all, you know, kind of where the term vanity came from. Okay, now back, back remember when I was telling you about, you know, how like typesetting, you know, the initial stage of putting together a book has gone from like three grand to five hundred dollars. I mean, it's come way, way down. So has the whole vanity concept. Okay, the whole, so in the end, you know, it, it didn't matter that I was taking, you know, thirty thousand dollars from you, and not doing anything. Nowadays, they only take thousand, two thousand dollars from you, and don't really do anything for you. It's still generally a dead end. Okay, and there's two things that I want you going out of here armed with. Okay, the first thing is the knowledge of the ISBN and what that is, 
Okay, now an ISBN number, if you don't know it already, you turn over a book there, so it's like a 13-digit number. It used to be all 10. It's a 13 now. Okay, that is what identifies the publisher. Okay, it, it, ten, it identifies the title, but more importantly, it identifies who the publisher is. Okay, so any place that says, I mean, I, ISBNs are issued by agencies around the world. The U.S. agency happens to be a place called R.R. Balker. Okay, uh, Balker has agents. They have a handful of agents. I happen to be one. So you cannot buy or get given or assigned an ISBN by anybody that belongs to you. Okay, the, the single, that used to be, they, they come in blocks, right? And uh, used to be the minimum was 10. Okay, now they've, they've gone down to all oh, selling singles, which I actually, it, they're fairly expensive for one if you end up doing 10 books. It's not bad if you end up, you know, if, if it's just like an entry level. Uh, Balker retails them at like $125, okay? I can, I can sell them for them because I don't need to make money on that part of it. I sell them for like $99. Okay. If you see something for $49, $29, free, whatever, it's not yours. It's not worth the money, okay? Because once you're identified as, once you're identified as the publisher, you can get up and go. I mean, you, you want, you know, the portability of being able to, well, this didn't work out okay, that I'm going to go over and try this. So you read an article about a particular company, you know, a particular distribution form. It's like, oh, I'd like to try that. Well, if it's not your ISBN, it doesn't, you can't do it, okay? I mean, because it's already identified the publisher, okay? So <clears throat> if you look at, I see, basically broken it down, and this came to me in a flash one night. You basically got two, once you're into that self-publishing mode, Okay, you ready? Are you ready to publish? You got either self-publishing or you got paid to be published publishing. Okay, and the paid to be published publishing, okay, is now the polite word for the vanity publishing. Okay, and the problem with the the whole vanity model is that. Number one, once you decide to self-publish, you're going to pay all the bills, period. That's the way it goes, okay? It's all coming out of your pocket. There's no, I mean, there's some places it called cooperative, some places called subsidy, but shared, and not sharing anything. You're paying everything, okay? Maybe they're not making as much on a particular function, but anybody that tells you that they're chipping in, they're not, okay? I mean, you're, the model doesn't, you know, the model does not, you know, include that publisher paying anything, okay? That, that publisher gets the money from you who in turn takes a cut and then goes and buys a service, okay? The pay to be published, right? It's very important. I mean, you're not the publisher, okay? If, if you've all, there's a whole string of them. It's actually easier. It's a, it's a much larger target now because all, a place called Author House. Anybody heard of Author House? Okay. And the author, so they've changed the name like a million times, but they're, they're really the parent companies like Author Solutions, okay? And they're, they're the granddaddy of them all, okay? And I've, you know, been like the street corner preacher against them, you know, for 15 years, you know, and yet they're making $100 million and I, and I don't. It's two, two lines of thought, okay, right? There's like, you know, knowledge is power, ignorance is bliss, okay? Unfortunately, we're, you know, we're really in an ignorant is bliss sort of society, you know, and they make it look so easy, okay, that, oh, well, hell, I'm, I'm, I'm going to publish here. You know, anybody heard of a place called Publish America? There you go. Okay, there, they pay you a dollar, you know, and that looks good enough, you know, they, you know, they pay you a royalty, so therefore they're not a vanity publisher. It's still, it's, it's their number. You got to, you focus in on, well, can I use, can I use, you know, when the first salesman calls you, it's like, well, I want to use my own ISBN number. If they say, oh, no, 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 we, you know, we'll sign one. We'll give you one. We'll give you one. Just say, no, 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 thanks. I need, I need to use my own. Okay. The, okay, with true self-publishing, okay, the author, you're the publisher, the author is, owns the ISBN. 
Now, once you own, say you buy a block of 10. Say you buy, yeah, yeah, let's go with a block of 10. Okay, it's like $250. Okay, so the difference between a block of one and a block of 10 is not that much money. So, you know, generally it's like if, if money's that tight, it might not be time to go into publishing. Okay, because you are going to spend some money. I mean, that's, that's just, that's the way it is. Uh, but say you bought a block of 10. Okay, you're officially a publisher at that point. <clears throat> okay, now if you choose to publish your own book, okay, so now you've got your publisher hat on and you choose to publish your own book, then you're like a self-publisher, right? You don't have to. Those 10 ISBNs that you just bought, I can publish your book. But who's the publisher if I publish your book? Me, right? So you're the author, right? And I'm the publisher. Whoever owns those ISBNs is the publisher. Okay, you, you can all choose to publish your own book first. You can choose to pu publish other books first. You don't ever have to publish one of your own books. You can just publish other people's books. The start is getting that ISBN series. Uh, they come in tens, come in hundreds, thousand. I think I got a, thousand, a couple of blocks of a thousand. Never quite figured out what to do with them. Uh, one of the problems with being the publisher is you got the liability. Okay, say you got a group of you here. Okay, this, I can think of this one here. Everybody in the group here exchanges business cards and says, why don't we just buy one block? They only cost like $6 a piece if you buy a large block. And we'll all split them up. Can't do that. Okay, because there's only one publisher there. Right, so when you've signed up, oh, I get to be the publisher and we'll all split. Okay, well, you can't really do it because of the, li the liability factor. Is when, you know, when they track it backwards, is like whoever owns the ISBN, I mean, that's the publisher. So here you are, you're working, you know, hard as can be, trying to, you know, sell your book. You finally get in the store and they look up and, you know, you get 10 books in there or whatever and they sell out. They look up where to reorder the book. Do they order from you? No, nah, they order from whoever, whoever owns that ISBN block because it can only be one publisher listed on that ISBN block. So it's, that's the first step, okay? I mean, that's what you have to do, and you can't, as, as good as it sounds, you know, you, you don't want to be using anybody else's ISBN, okay? There's, I mean, and, but then, and, and if you do, I mean, I, I'm going to come up with an exception to the rule. Uh, E-books. Everybody all like hopped up. I see like everybody's kindling right now. I'm glad to see pens in everybody's hands. You know, I, I personally still think, you know, e-books been around for a, long, you know, a while. Okay, it's like the first batch of venture capital money hit like, you know, 10 years ago. And you would have thought going to the trade shows that like I was the only one on the earth without, you know, that wasn't reading e-books. Well, after the venture capital money ran out, there were no e-books, okay? I mean, it was like, you know, the, you know, the rocket book. I, it, it took me, I, I ride the train into New York every day. And I, I look around, I observe, you know, this is what I do, you know, I look to see what people were doing. And I found, this is in the first wave of e-books, I finally found a, uh, a guy with an e-book reader. And I was so excited, I went over to him. I said, wow, is that, you know, is that a rocket book? You know, he said, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, God, that's really cool. I said, I've never seen one. He said, how do you like it? He said, ah, it's terrible. I said, why'd you get it? He said, oh, I work at Barnes & Noble. I said, okay, so that, that was it. So then we had, the, you know, the second wave. Okay, now the second wave had the heavy hitters involved, right? You got Amazon, and then later on you got Apple, and then you got everybody, all the different lookalikes. It's still, I, I, I wrote an article, I, I, I really hope, I, I put a business card in everybody's packet. If you don't do anything else, I want you to go to that website, that self-publishing, and sign up for the Publishing Basics newsletter. Okay, because, you know, each month, I mean, we, we sometimes, I try to do it twice a month. It doesn't always work. But each month, the articles are good, you know, and, and they really, it, 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 there's nobody blowing smoke. I mean, it, they're all like, you know, true examples, real examples, you know, do this. We try to keep the fluff out of there completely. I just did an article. Uh, on the new e-books, right? Because I was, I was worried. I mean, I, if you notice my all, uh, the, the picture in the program, I had a little longer hair. Okay, and the only reason I bring this up, I mean, I, I, I had uh, five months ago, I was sitting at Sloan Kettering waiting to get a stem cell transplant. And that was after four months of like, you know, getting chemo and thing and bang and boom, whatever. I'm, 
you know, I'm alive and well. That's, you know, what's happened. I was out of commission better part of a year. So not traveling. Okay. My, my main, you know, like sitting and looking and talking to people and watching and seeing what they do is a whole lot better than reading, you know, having somebody tell me what people are doing. You know, I, I feel like I can believe my eyes. So I went out, this is my first trip in, you know, in a long while out to see my son out in college in Ohio. And I had to uh, go through Philly, you know, to get my frequent flyer miles to work or whatever. I'll never do that again. But during the time, it was about four or five hours worth of laying over between going out and coming back. And when I first hit the uh, airport, well, I, I go to the little White Plains airport, wasn't that many people there. In the morning, it was early enough, everybody was drinking coffee, reading the paper. It looked the same as it did a year ago. I got to Philly, and now there's hundreds of people there. It's kind of mid-morning. I look around, I, I, I thought I was like Rip Van Winkle, you know, waking up. Everybody's plugged in, looking at, I mean, they, they got this hand going, that hand going, they got, it's like, holy cow, Christ, I'm going to be out of business. Because I, I believe, I mean, you can't have a book without a book. Okay, that's, that's my own personal belief, and I'll believe that till, you know, I drop dead. Okay, so now I'm worried. I said, holy cow, you know, if this, because usually you look around, the, you know, you look around the airport, right, people reading books, reading newspapers, magazines, whatever. Everybody had a gadget. So I had plenty of time, so I said, well, let me look a little closer here, because I got a I got an iPad in my briefcase here. Uh, I use it for Netflix. Uh, I started walking around and looking and seeing exactly, number one, I didn't see a single Kindle. Okay, so that's it. The Kindle, as you, people that have them, all you can do is read a book there. You can't play games or anything. You can just read a book. Okay. But I had a smartphone. Okay, as I look closer on those smartphones, and I've been wondering, because I do email marketing, wondering why the response rate hadn't been quite as high. Well, I swear these smartphones now are just delete machines. You know, I see that thumb like giving it a workout. You know, everybody's going to have carpal tunnel on their, on their thumb. You know, that'll be the, like the next generation. So nobody's reading a book, obviously. Okay, now, like, iPads, hey, that scares me. I mean, Apple's got a lot of money, you know, and, you know, that scares me because there's a lot of iPads out there. So I start looking around, and I'm trying to find, you know, who's, well, there's nobody reading a book. I'm looking on the iPad. Well, this one's playing this game. This one's playing this game. This one's on this website. This is on... To the point, and, and I walked up and down. I had like I had like almost two hours to kill, and I'm walking up and down, and you know, being not obnoxious, but it was like, you know, what are you, you know, what are you looking at? You know, and I didn't see a book. So the conclusion I came to was that what we're doing, you know, the the book, it the airport, right, is competing. It's entertainment time. It's like, what do you do to kill time? Okay, I mean, there's. Not that much creative, you know, most people are looking to kill time in between planes. So as a book, as a writer, as a publisher, okay, you're competing against these games, but you're not like the decision, do I do a printed book or an e-book or whatever, oh, maybe I should just do an e-book. It's like, get that out of your mind. I mean, it's not, it's still most, I won't say mostly hype, it's a lot of hype, okay? And they, they keep, I, I, I said, you know, if, if the e-books are so, you know, so successful, how come they're still using the same person's name they've been using for five years as the ebook success? I can't even remember her name. One of you probably know. Sold a million, 10 million, 100 million, whatever she did. But they keep using the same name. It's like if it was so successful, it seems like we'd have a whole list of names by now. And we don't, you know. And so while, you know, we're, we're competing, you know, I, we're competing against other forms of entertainment, at least in that, you know, in that mode, you know, in that, in that airport. And maybe we're going to lose the airport business. You know, all the terminal that I was in only had four stores because they were rebuilding the terminal. And one of the four stores was the bookstore. So I don't know. I mean, what's that? You know, either they're stuck with their lease or they make enough business still selling books and magazines and, uh, and newspapers to keep them going. And so as you think, I mean, there's, again, publishing's a business. As you get going, I mean, you're gonna have these business decisions, okay? And you're, you're, you've got to somehow sift through the hype. I mean, there's always hype on everything. I mean, I'm, you know, you, you can go to like a Zig Ziglar thing. I mean, you, you can go, if you wanna get all pumped up, motivated, you can 
you know, all kinds of places you can go. Okay, you run a business. I mean, it's kind of like reality. You got to make decisions. You got all, you know, your 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 main decision. You know, or your 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 first business principle really is that you can't take a loss and make it up in volume. Can't do it. Never have been able to. You can. Anybody ever buy that like 99 cent chicken all cutlets? Everybody has. Okay, that's a loss leader. Okay, I mean that that not if everybody just went in and bought the 99 cent chicken, turned around and walked out, the grocer would be out of business. Okay, because he's taking a loss on it. But he gets you in. My first backer happened to be a grocer, so I know a little bit about it. Okay, the idea is get you in by the chicken, but then the idea is to get you to aisle five where the pickles are, and the pickles all have like huge markups. And if he can get you into the pickle aisle, he's got you. You know. And everybody, if you notice, the grocery stores are more and more and more non-food because the non-food has higher markups. And you all know, I mean, my wife comes home, I mean, we'll have one little bag of food and like 15 bags of everything but food. And, you know, never anything on sale. I mean, it, it's just all, that's how they work. So, so when you're, you're doing a, a book, okay, I mean, you can do a test. I mean, you can... You know, like discounts are discounts. I mean, if you want to put it in Amazon, you're going to pay, you know, 60% off the retail price. Okay, I mean, that's what, it's, that's what it is. Okay, if 60% off the retail price means you're losing money, it's okay initially. Okay, I mean, well, the other thing, as a consumer now, uh, people buy books like meat. You know, they're kind of buying by the pound. I mean, this, you know, they, there's not a single consumer to care, that could care less how much you spend. Okay, all they care about is what's it going to cost them. Okay, and they look at in the product. Okay, they may spend a little more. Like here's a book, it feels like 20 bucks. Okay, if it's got a $30 price tag on it, it's going to go back on the shelf. If it's a $30 book about, uh, you know, that's so unique, may, maybe you'll do it. You know, but for the most part, I mean, although everybody's convinced that their book is so unique, it's generally not. I mean, it's a com it's a commodity market, and you've got to. If the rest of the world is selling for fourteen ninety five, you got to stick and you got to make it work within fourteen ninety five. Now, if that means initially, well, I think I got a market over here, and initially you got to lose money on the, a small quantity of books to see if it's going to sell. That's okay, but not to think that you're going to. Well, maybe I'm not only going to. I'm, I'm not going to discount. Well, that's your your dream. You know, or I'm gonna I'm gonna sell them all. I mean, you, you, the websites. I mean, that's talking about like the all getting away from the whole elitist high entry level to get into the all publishing. You know, the the internet has all certainly helped. Okay, and, and and anybody with you know a little bit of talent and a couple searches or whatever, it's not that hard to put together a website. Okay, and then the website you're all. I mean, I, I remember just like the commercial. I think it was IBM had the commercial with the first click. On my website. I mean, I started a website in 1994, and it was like you know, at the end of the day, I, I had stats. I said, wow, look at that! Five people found me, you know. And and now, I mean, you know, we've gotten quite a bit larger, but it's still the same concept. I mean, you get out there, okay, and people. If you've got something that you believe, first of all, you got to believe in what you're selling, anyhow. And if you think you've got something that people feel you know want to buy, you got to direct it towards the people that want to buy it. You know, the, uh, like I say, with, with fig, you know, with fiction, do you have any children's books here? People working on children's books? Okay. The one, <clears throat> that's a little bit different market too, but it's a, it's a narrow market, right? I mean, you want, you know, if you, if you want the example I use, because it's a book I helped the guy publish, was on play, oh, learn how to play golf left-handed. Okay, now, yeah, I'm left-handed. Uh, it's pretty narrow market. Okay, if you're right-handed, you're not going to buy it, probably, unless you have a friend, right? So left hand, and if you play tennis and you don't play golf, whatever, you're not interested. So it's a pretty narrow market, you know. When, when people say, when I ask, well, that's one of the first questions. I say, where is your market? Who's going to buy this? I say, oh, everybody. I say, well, you're in trouble, you know, unless you just hit lotto or whatever. I mean, you're you're in trouble, okay? Because if your market is so broad that you just think everybody's going to buy it. You probably don't have the money that you need to put into it in order to get exposure to everybody. Okay, you're all, you're generally 
going to, I mean, with, with fiction, most of the hands went up for fiction, okay, and I'll be honest, I mean, it's a, it's just, it's a much harder, harder sell, but a good book, good news travels, bad news travels, right? I mean, so the first, whether you're doing, I mean, the, anybody heard of print on demand? Yeah. There you go, man, that's it. I, I'm a, I, I say I'm a printer uh, by trade. Print on demand's been around since Gutenberg. You, buyer demands, printer prints, okay? Nothing, it's nothing new, nothing magical. What's happened is the uh, turnaround time's gotten much less. Okay, you order one of those Gutenberg Bibles, it's like come back next year, you know, and get delivery. Uh, right now, you can literally, it, it's all, you know, put an order in. I mean, half the books you see on the internet, and, and Amazon especially, don't even exist. You know, and they say they're available, they'll ship in two days. I mean, they, where you, you click at Amazon and buy it, the signal goes down to the printer, who prints it, puts in an Amazon label, sends it out, all within like that 24-hour period, and you don't know the you know you don't know the difference. I mean that that's generally all. Uh, what's thought of as the print on demand that's been fairly recent to that that it's actually worked. Uh, there's a uh, one company that is owned by uh, Lightning or that's owned by Ingram. There's between a distributor. There, there's somebody right now. Unfortunately, you can't go to both at the same time. Uh, Eric Campman talking about distribution. <clears throat> There's a difference between a distributor and a wholesaler. Okay, people talk about, well, Ingram's my, you know, I'm being distributed by Baker and Taylor. No, you're not. I mean, they're a wholesaler. Okay, uh, Ingram, same way. I mean, they're they're not, they're they're, they're not a uh, distributor. They're you know they're they're a wholesaler. They sell to retailers. Okay, so getting to a wholesaler and getting it into their catalog is important because the the little bookstore that you go to. Say to do your book signing, uh, the little bookstore is going to doesn't really want to buy it from you. They want to buy it because they have an association with a wholesaler, right? So they can order your book and have it show up in a couple of days from Ingram or Baker and Taylor, <clears throat> and then they've only got one bill to pay, not 30 bills. <clears throat> so what Ingram did, Ingram was bought the first what they called print on demand printer. It's a place called Lightning Print. This goes back probably 15 years ago. And it was designed primarily to take printer back lists. Okay, now life of a book. All right, you got front list. That's when you see all the commercials. That lasts, I don't know, three months, four months. Then it goes mid-level list, right? Then it goes to back list. Okay, publishers, and then it goes out of print. Okay, traditionally, publishers would take a book out of print if they couldn't make money out of it the smallest reprint was generally a couple thousand bucks. And if you couldn't justify printing a couple thousand bucks, they took it out of all, took it out of circulation, took it out of print. And that's usually when, you, you know, the re rights would revert back to the author. With print on demand, you've got, the demand's already out there, right? You, it was designed for backlisted titles. So it's like, I'm looking for this book, I'm not hearing the first wave, I'm not hearing the second wave, but I still want the book. Okay, rather than being out of print, the book is printed, print on demand, one at a time. Now, the one at a time pricing is significantly higher than the initial printing price. All right, so if the average, uh, there was a study some years back where the average, uh, average book size is 256 pages, average quantity was 3,000 copies. So, if you look at the, uh, the pricing matrix, like how, you know that that fifteen dollar book I said. Well, that cost if, if the average is three thousand copies, it's like ten times the printing cost. Okay, is what the retail price is, and that's about what you need in order to be. And, and people argue different ways about how high that multiple's got to be. But you you've got to, you've got to have enough room between the cost and the retail cost to be able to discount. They say, I mean, you're going to, if you want it in Amazon, you're going to discount. Uh, if I buy 3,000 books, and the, the nice thing, if you go to this, the website, self-publishing, uh, you can see the difference right there in front of you. I mean, here's 100 books, here's 1,000 books, here's 5,000, here's 10,000. The price keeps going down. I mean, the, you know, the first book is, you know, pretty expensive, but they get real cheap after that. Uh, used to have to buy 3,000 in order to be able to have any chance of making it work. OK, 
okay, with the, the, on the numbers. With the digital now, I mean, you can, you can buy fewer, okay, but you, you know, you, you still, you, you can't do the one at a time. What the Vanity Press has done with the same lightning print in the meantime, oh yeah, in the meantime, any, anybody, back when I had the publishing company that went under, I, I had an account with Ingram. Anybody could have an account with Ingram, right? I mean, it was really good, you know, I mean, you, you set up with them, they got a discount, they sold it to the stores, everybody, they all live happily ever after. Uh, the printer that Ingram owned, Lightning Print, was on the verge of going bankrupt. Instead of letting it go bankrupt, somebody came up with the bright idea that, well, we won't do business now with anybody that has 10 ISBNs or less. We'll make them go through our printer. Great idea, okay. Somehow they didn't manage, in, you know, they didn't end up in court or anything. They got rid of all the small publishers and forced them into their printer. Okay, and that worked out quite well for them. Okay, now uh, it's called Lightning Source now. And they're very good. I mean, it's a very interesting uh, place where you really can buy one book. And it comes off a glorified copy machine. The cover goes on at the other end and looks like a book, feels like a book. Uh, the books that you have in your hand, these publishing basics books, they were print, I printed them at the, you know, on a digital press. You know, it, it, it used to be, you know, really significant differences between the two all uh, printing processes. And what's happened now, the technology has evolved to the point where there's not, there's not, that, there's not that much difference between the processes from a quality standpoint, right? It's like price, service, quality, pick two. Uh, <clears throat> It's a matter of numbers. It's still the more you buy, the less the unit cost is going to be. The reason the digital press, the digital press is high. Say, say the three thousand price, and you can play with it at the, at that website. Say the three thousand dollar or three thousand copy price is a dollar. Okay. The one of the time cost may be five dollars. Okay. And the thing with the digital press is that every single copy costs the same. With the more traditional press, it's an offset press, we call it. Okay, it costs a fair amount of money to get the first book, but then it runs real fast. Right? So you, you're amortizing. So if you buy one book on this big press, it may be $1,000 to start the press up, but then only you know, a half a dollar to run additional books. So you've got to take that $1,000 that it costs and amortize it over a quantity to where, meanwhile, the digital press starts at five, ends at five. Never gets any cheaper. It just is what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. Eventually, when you've amortized those costs of the, uh, the make ready over the run, the offset press becomes significantly cheaper than the digital press. Okay. Why can some publishers make money at the five dollars a book, okay, when they originally bought them for a dollar? Right, and that's how they said. There's no marketing when when it was set up as a backlist item. Okay, the marketing there, there was no marketing. Right, the marketing had already been done. The book was already out in circulation. The title was out there. Professors were already telling people. You know, it was already on required reading lists. It was out there. So there was no marketing. There, it, some genius who got involved with these pay-to-be-published publishers decided, well, let's take what was intended for a backlist and turn it into a front list. Why not? Yeah, we can do one book at a time. Okay, we, you know, these authors aren't going to have to take a thousand books or two thousand books. You know, they can just take one. Well, the problem with that is on a front list, you have to have marketing. I mean, you'd be sitting here with one book or 50 books or a carton of books, and if nobody knows they're here, they're not going to buy them. So, where the publisher could make money with it as a backlist because he had no marketing, you, it, it's almost impossible to make it, you know, when you have to, you know, put the marketing into the front list. So while it looks good, sounds great, this guy started with 100 books and then he started with, oh, uh, you know, and he only does, you know, one at a time or five at a time or whatever, the math will never work out, okay? And the, the difference, again, remember, between self-publishing and pay-to-be-publishing, Okay. You're going you're gonna to pay all the marketing expenses one way or the other. And no matter what anybody says, you know, no matter what you pay, you're going to be the one that's out there basically peddling your buck. Okay. 
in exchange, normally when if, with a regular like a Random House or Simon Schuster, okay, that marketing expense comes out of that publisher profit, right? That publisher, you know, like there's always an author royalty, right? So even as your self-publisher, part of the money that when you're setting up your, your business, I mean, part of the money you're thinking about is you're paying yourself a royalty. Okay, even though, you know, you're the company, you're paying yourself a royalty that needs to be broken out to be realistic with yourself. Okay, the rest of the profit is the publisher's profit. Right now, out of the publisher's profit comes expenses. Okay, now, if you look in this pay to be publishing, this is the biggest difference. The very bottom line, okay, who gets the publisher profit? Okay, both sides are paying all the money. When you're truly self-publishing, you're not only getting the author royalty, you're getting the publisher's profit. Okay? Over on the other side, and it's all, it, it's the model, it's the way it's set up. Okay? The, the author house, our universe, like Sleepers or whatever, I, got, I mean, there's, there's a zillion of them out there. Okay? You do the marketing, but that chunk of money that's there intended as the publisher profit, they get it. They haven't done anything. Right, they they haven't done anything for that. You've done you've done all the work, you've paid all the money, and they get the profit. So that's that's why it just never works out. It's like well, you can set your own price, you can set your own royalty. You can don't confuse the two. You know, I mean, you can set your own royalty when you're doing it yourself. You know, there, there's 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 no magic in this. Okay, I mean, it it really it really is a, a, a numbers game, and if you're I mean, over the years, people ask me, well, you know, what's the most successful book you've ever seen self-published? And I had a guy, he's got Les Fox, back with, uh, did a Beanie Baby handbook. This goes back some years. Uh, it sold like two million copies before it was all over. And he did make his own rules. You know, you got to sell the book returnable, you got to give 60% off. You don't have to do anything if the demand is there. You know, and he was getting Barnes & Noble to buy him 100000 at a time, cash on delivery, no return. You know. You don't have that kind of power. Maybe one, you know, I mean, if I do, you know, these things long enough, I'll have another less wander in. You know, for the most part, that's not going to happen. Okay, I mean, you're going to have to take the returns. You're going to have to, you know, you know, it's, it's not going to happen quick like that. Usually, it's like planting seeds, especially fiction. Okay, you do 100, and you get it to 100 readers. The next 100 are going to get sold by those 100 readers. I mean, that's all, uh, you know, back, I don't even know if Oprah's still on. I mean, the big thing used to always be, everybody knew Oprah, right? Everybody had a friend of a friend of a friend was going to get them on Oprah, and that was it. We're all going to be rich. Uh, there was a, uh, everybody familiar with Amy Fisher? Anybody remember her? The Long Island Lolita? Yeah. With, uh, who was that? Joey Butterfuca. Uh She published her own book through one of these vanity presses, our universe. Okay, she got an hour on Oprah, an hour. Okay, it repeated for another hour. You know how many books she sold? Like 20,000 books. I mean, the publisher took a bath. I, I, I did a lot of the printing for her because I was friends with the president. I mean, I did a lot of, I, I printed like 10,000 of them. I mean, they got a warehouse somewhere where they had a book burning or whatever. I mean, they, they I mean, the getting on the, and the problem was being on Oprah, you have to have certainly sold a certain amount of books, okay? But if the book was no good, which this one happened to be no good, that person that got, bought that book didn't sell it to the next person, saying, wow, this is really a good book. So now you got your five people sitting around the table saying, hey, did you read so-and-so by so-and-so? No, I haven't. Oh, you really ought to get it. That's how you sell books, okay? Uh, and it didn't happen with Amy. So that was with Oprah. Uh, my most, and I, have, I don't even have a watch. How are we doing? 12.13. Okay. I want, I want time for, for all. I'll give you one quick story on what I call my most successful. And, I, and again, remember, we've lowered the bar to get into self-publishing. If, you, you know, if you've ever sold anything, you know, Tupper, Tupperware people, man, there, you know, you can sell books. You know, it's all, it, it, it really is, you, gotta, you can't be bashful. It's like, here's my book. Hi, have you seen my book? You, you can't be walking around, you got women, you got, you got a pocketbook, whatever. There's always got to be a copy of the book in there. You know, guys, it's a little harder. You got to carry them in a briefcase or something. You know, but you've all, you are your book. Once you're the publisher, you are your book. And you've got to be able to walk up to somebody 
you know, and or go, you know, go go to you know writers groups or go to places, you know, oh, have you seen my book here? Maybe you have to give a couple of them away. Maybe you can, you know, and hope that that one person like really likes it. You know, outside of your, you know, your mother and your father and your sisters and brothers, who will rarely tell you that your book is no good. Uh, I've done, there's a fellow named Relentless Aaron, okay, and he started uh, writing when he was in prison, okay, so instead of pumping iron, getting in trouble, whatever, he decided he, he took some classes, practiced writing, wrote three books, got out of prison, did a hundred copies of the first book, lived up in Harlem, sold them on the street. Got enough money out of the hundred, did another hundred. Sold them. Then he had enough money, he could not only do a hundred of these, he could do his second book. Now he's got two books. Okay. Relentless now has, he's got like 40 some titles out right now. St. Martin Press gave him $300,000 to do, you know, four titles. He's still, he moved to Atlanta for some reason. You know, I'm still, you know, working with him. But they're, the hustlers, I mean, if, if, how many are from old New York City? No, huh. okay. If you go around the streets of New York, there's like books on every corner. Okay, that's, it's the absolute best way to sell books. I mean, the street peddlers are actually much more organized. You know, it's a bonus if you live anywhere near Metro New York because you've got that outlet there. But uh, that's it. So let, let's, before I like yak past lunch, any questions? You mentioned earlier that, uh, that we could acquire, if we wanted to acquire a uh, number from you, if we do that, is that yours or is that? No, that's yours. It'll come from all, the, there's like five of us, I believe, that are all agents. And you buy through me at a discount, it's 99 bucks if you, oh, if you print the rest of the books with me, it's 125 if you don't. Uh, it's yours. I mean, it, it's all, oh, I might add with the ISBN, as far as when you're thinking about one or ten, there's not that much difference. I mean, if it's $100 for one, $250 for ten. Every edition of your book needs a different ISBN, every, diff every style, right? So you've got a paperback, that's one ISBN. You've got a hardcover, which I don't really recommend self-publishing right off the bat. If you've got a hardcover, that's another ISBN. Ebooks, very confusing. Okay, each ebook format needs an ISBN. So you've got, other than, okay, you, you've got Amazon, who's got their own system, right? They're the Mobi format. Uh, if you go direct to Amazon, the, the, it's ISBN is optional because they give it their own number anyhow. It's an, it's an all Amazon number. If you go through uh, a, 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 distri a regular distributor, uh, you're going to need an ISBN for the Mobi edition, which is all... Uh, Amazon and the EPUB edition, which is pretty much everybody else. Uh, reading what's going on with all these different e-formats, who knows how many you know formats we're going to end up with? Hopefully, you know it's like the VHS and the you know and the you know whatever the bait or whatever one. Well, and you know hopefully we'll end up with like one format eventually. Right now, you you ju you ju you're just guessing. Uh, but that, so if, you, if you're doing it that way, I mean, you've got, say, paperback, hardcover, and all the two versions of the, I mean, you've got four ISBNs right there. So while I sell singles, I recommend people buy 10. Okay, and then that's it. If you never use them, you never use them, you know, but, uh, you know, you'll use, it, it'll encourage you to, you know, to do more. You can't reuse the ISBN, right? You can revise a book, okay, and not, not call it a second edition. You know, if you call it a second edition, it needs another ISBN. I'm in like the fourth edition of Publishing Basics. There's four different ISBNs. Uh, there's a reason to not do a, a new ISBN. A Amazon is, is this, go find a telephone number on Amazon sometime. There is none. Okay. It's just this giant machine. I got pictured like Jeff Bezos with a cigar with a pile of money. With, I mean, it's a machine. You can, it's like you can't fight City Hall. You can't fight them either. You know, it just kind of happens. So people come up with a second edition and they get all upset because Amazon still lists the first edition primary and they can't, nobody can find the second edition. That's the way it is. You know, so you are better you know, to keep 
revise it. If you're going to bend any rule, that's the rule I bend to try to keep whatever's in there first to keep that going that that's the title. <laughs> yes? Barcodes. Where do you get them? Barcodes. Barcodes that should come with the ISBN or your old designer. You don't need a barcode for an, oh, an e-book, obviously, right? Uh, for a regular book, uh, the barcode is called like a Bookland e E-A-N. And uh, that should either, like with me, for the 99 bucks, it comes with it. Uh, if you, you know, a designer usually has a software that they can input the uh, ISBN and come up with a barcode. It's nothing magical. I mean, it, if, you, if you get charged anything, it shouldn't be more than $25. Yeah. If, uh, if you said you needed you know, a new SPM for like a second edition, let's say you go with the, a digital printer and you print, you know, 500 copies and then you do a second printing, is that the same ISBN? Yes. Okay. See, that's the beauty. Now that, what he hit on there, right there, okay. I can use that one ISBN and I can go through every distribution channel that I can find that will use my ISBN if I want to at all. You can't do it when you're using somebody else's. So if you see a website, you know, well, that looks pretty cool. You know, may, you know, maybe they've got some traffic. You know, you want as much exposure as you can, okay? And as much as I might trash like Amazon, I mean, Amazon's got the trust. I mean, I buy from Amazon all the time. I got that Amazon Prime, whatever, with the two-day. So even if you've got your own website and you're selling through, through your website, you want to put a link so people can buy it at Amazon because they may like you, they trust them. You know, so you're giving up a discount, but it's like you're, you know, you're not getting a sale. Most of the time, if you give them a choice, it's a choice between you getting a sale and not getting a sale, whether you have that Amazon link. Anybody else? I know you have a question. Oh, ah, you got a question. Okay. You, you uh, quickly went over the POD in on band. You also quickly went over digital versus traditional press. Where do you, where do you, with, obviously, which ones, I'm, I'm confused, which do you favor as, I mean, obviously you're using a certain service that you favor, you apply yourself, and what is that? <coughs> well, luckily, I use them all. See, luckily, we've gotten to the point technology-wise, when the digital first came out, it was one nasty-looking product, and it was, at best, a copy shop looking copy of a book that pages fell out and you know it, it was it was just a difference I mean over the years the color a color cover I mean it got to the point you know thank God for like USA Today you know with the you know where you can see the dots hanging out you know and you can see the yellow I mean that you know I sold annual reports for years you know I mean USA Today did more to uh, get people to what you know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable uh, and what's happened, you know, there's very little quality difference now between the processes. So now it's really just a matter of what's the most price efficient for what your purpose. I mean, if you only want to sell them one at a time through Amazon, that's where the PO print on demand. Okay, that's the highest cost per copy, but it's the least out of, you don't, you know, you, I, I personally like a, a closet full of books. I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's, not, there's never much more incentive than opening up that closet and seeing that book. You know, if you've got print on demand, you know, if you read the books that say 99% of businesses fail and you happen to feel like a failure, POD is great, man, because you don't have no inventory, you know, so you, you can fail without any clutter. You know, I just don't believe in it. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I do, a, a, if you look at oh, my website, I sell it as an option over on the side. And it's like pennies from heaven. I mean, to, with a POD book, it, on a 256-page book, you make like three and a half dollars. It's like, where is the book? What's who cares? It doesn't matter. Just if, if ten of them sell, they're going to sell places that you're not going to get to. Okay, they got, they got this electronic networks. I like got 26,000 outlets. Okay, somebody stumbles onto your book for whatever reason and buys it. All you know is you made three dollars and twenty-five cents. Okay. Meanwhile, you've got your own books and you're giving speeches and you're giving and you're going out and you're walking and you're selling. Okay, so you, you got control over your inventory. That's really, the, the pre POD part is really just like the magic part. You know, I had a penny from heaven, check your PayPal account once a month. I, you know, I've gone, and again, I, I believe that POD, it was, when I first started talking about POD, I, I talked about it the same way as like the e-book, I just talked about e-books. 
it was a lot of smoke and mirrors. I've gotten to the point now where, you know, if you make over $600, I've got to give you a 1099. I mean, it takes me the better part of a date on the 1099s now. You know, and that's not as a primary dis distribution. That's people that have bought books, they're out selling books, and say, I'm, you forget to, you know, take one of these for free. You say, what was the name of that that was published in Basics? You'd be surprised how many end up going back online and buying the book. So, it, and, and you wouldn't have sold it. You would not have sold it, you know, elsewhere. You know, you're not going to get into every tiny little store. You don't want to. You can't afford it. You know, oh, I got my book in the Barnes & Noble. Great. You know, so when they, you know, you've already paid, you've already paid the printer, you've already paid everybody. Six months later, Barnes & Noble sends half of them back. Okay, now, oh, I already spent that money. You know, where's money? I mean, somebody wants to distribute it, wants their money back. You know, they said, so what do you mean money back? I already spent it. You know, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's fairly scary, the traditional thing, the, the one step at a time. My daughter uh, published a couple of children's books, and she's a teacher. She's, a, I mean, she just lives Oliver the Clownfish. She is Oliver. Yeah, I, I swear she had my granddaughter just so she could dress up in a, you know, Oliver outfit to go out selling with her. You know, it, but it, 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 and, and she sold, you know, two, three thousand of each book. You know, she's in her third book now. Uh, and it's done really well, but it, it, it fits her day job, too, you know, because she's a reading specialist. You know, so, well, the main thing, like anything else, like I tell kids with sports, you want to have fun. I mean, there's some people like, you know, Relentless, when he got out of prison, he was sort of forced to, you know, to do, he said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for a living, I'm going to make money. Uh, you want to have fun, you know. I mean, it doesn't have to be all work. I mean, if you're not having fun doing it, you probably had fun writing it, you know. If you, you know, if it stops being fun, man, do something else, you know. It, it's, it's like, and when it's over, it's over. I mean, it doesn't matter how successful a book is. I mean, there, there's a last day of sale, and that's it. For whatever reason, you hit the wall, and nobody, you know. So you never want to just, you know. It's so wrapped up in yourself. Wow, I sold the first printing. Now I'm really going to print some books. And you end up now, instead of a closet full, you got a garage full. And that's when it stops. So you don't want to get in over your head. There's no reason to get in over your head. Okay? There's no, there's zero, there's just zero reason. You know, there's, there's no reason to spend, you, you're, you're like the, all, the con, you know, you're the contractor. You're, you're in charge. If you're going to be the publisher, you're in charge of everything. Uh, there's no reason to overspend on any aspect of it. You, know, you got guys selling design, $2,000, $2,500 for a cover. You don't have to do that. I mean, a couple hundred dollars, you get a nice cover. Uh, even editing, and I get, I get in a fight with my own editor all the time. You know, editing is still fairly expensive. I mean, you pay by the word. If you don't, if you don't have the money initially, it's okay to proofread it. It's okay to get your wife to read it. It's okay to get your English, old English teacher to read it. Okay, just don't print 20,000 books. Okay, so you print enough to get started. People like it. You made a little bit of money. Okay, now I'm going to invest in the editing. You know, and, you know, there, there are, there, there, there's basic rules, and that's all my basic rule. You got to keep having fun and don't get in over your head. I mean, it, it's all... You know, you got to be sure, you know, be sure of yourself. I mean, I started my company on five credit cards. You know, no venture capital money, no real money. Uh, two of the credit cards paid off the first three. Uh, but it all worked out, you know, because I believed in what I was doing. So if you believe in what you're doing, I mean, you, you, you can do real well and you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, meet a lot of, you know, a lot of nice people. And uh, I say, uh, we got to be just about out of time right there, Captain. I don't want to cut into lunch. Uh, I'm more than, you know, I put a card in there. Uh, I've got other people. I've got like, coaches and all there. I own the company. Uh, if I'm available, I mean, I don't charge anything. I mean, and you just want to talk about your book or whatever. I mean, I do answer the phone. Not all the time, you know. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, just mentioned the conference and said Ron said it was okay. And that gets by Jackie. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and it's, you know, I've, I've done it, and I say, I, I don't just sell from this end. I tell you, my background was printing, but I was a publisher, small publisher. I, did, I, did, I, I was a self-publisher, too, later on in life. I was another, sold 100,000. I did a game. You know, anybody doing a book that's, like, real controversial? 
Like about the election or something. Okay. There, I mean, controversy sells. I mean, I, I did a game. This was back in the 80s. I mean, it sold 100,000 copies. We're on like every major television show, radio show. But it was, I mean, it was wild. I mean, we had people like throwing rocks at us. I mean, but if you don't mind it, I mean, it, it's, uh, <laughs> it was wild. <clears throat> but we sold a lot. And that's all we were ever thinking about is that you can yell at me all you want. I got a camera on me. Great. You know, I hope some people are watching. You know, and, and that's how you got to be. You can't be bashful. You know, you, you got, I mean, if there's all a sales course at the local community college or whatever, you know, take it. it might, it's fun. You know, selling, everybody's a salesperson. You know, everybody, everybody that's got kids has been sold. You know, I mean, you're a natural salesperson and you, you work your way out of it for some reason. I mean, you're like born a salesperson. So, you know, it, it, you, you need to, you know, you, first you need to believe your book. Believe I know my book is good. So if I know it's good and you don't want it, that means that you didn't understand what I just told you. You know, I told you it's a good book. Here, why, you know. And, and they say, and have some fun. Summertime, you got street festivals. There you are, you're a published author. And all the other published, you know, other people think of, once you've got a book in your hand, then everybody else has got the book in their head, now looks at you as the expert. You know, oh man. And again, it doesn't matter, I've seen it a million times, myself included. Once you open that box for the first time, and there's your name, it's on the front cover. It does feel pretty good. You know, I mean, it is an accomplishment. You know, the idea, that accomplishment only needs to be that one carton if you're not going to go out and really hustle. Okay, it doesn't need to be the whole garage. You know, and that's where your, you know, that's where your business decision comes in. Everybody don't do a carton. You've got that many family and friends. Okay, it's like that making that decision, do I want to go to the next step? And people generally, you look, you know, they dream up excuses to not go out and sell. Okay, ah, it's not edited right, it's not perfect, You're not, it's never going to be perfect. Okay, get it out there, it's just like ice hockey, right? You got to, you know, worst come worst, you dump the puck down the end of the ice, because you're not going to score from this end. Okay, does it ever work? Usually not, you know, but you got to, you know, you got to get it in play. And when you're doing small quantum, when you're doing just what you can afford, you can always make changes. I mean, you can, I mean, I've got the first edition of the Publishing Basics, it doesn't resemble what it is now. You know, and it's been in print for, I don't know, 15 years now. So, that's it. I enjoyed you all. I'm glad you're here. This is a wonderful place. A, Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Great cameraman here. <laughs> did, did we have the mic on? Okay. If you didn't get all a copy of all this, read the book. The book actually is very simple. It's like after 20 years... It's like everybody has the same basic questions. And all it is is very simple question answers. You know, here's the question. You got the question. I guarantee you got the question. I got some questions for you, but I'll be in touch with you. This is, this is me. My uh, name's Ira. Ira uh, Herman. Ira from Peabody. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. What kind of book do you got?